All right. New year, new market. I'm here with my good buddy, Doug Reynolds, uh, talking about how to offer in a buyer's market. Most of you, um, if, if your market softened up over the course of the last six months, realize that you've got some, some more negotiating power. So i um, happy to, to have my buddy Doug to talk about what he's doing as an agent to write these offers, to structure these deals, um, to get buyers into homes. What do you got for us, Doug? Yeah, so definitely, at least in the Sacramento market, I think in general across the state and the country, the, the market is leaning towards favoring buyers right now. Uh, so it's important that you kind of understand what that means if you want to be successful as a buyer. Uh, I would say that it's important to know that every property is different and unique. So you don't just go, oh, it's a buyer's market, Matt. Well, that means I write 10% below the list price on every single house, whether it's been on the market for five months or five hours, you know, just 10% under. No, you've got to realize every property is unique. So there might be some that have been on the market for 100 days. They maybe even never changed the price. Uh, they've got just no prospects going or anything. Then, yeah. That's going to be a situation where you write a lower offer, you negotiate it down. Probably the comps are supporting a lower price than where that one's listed at. And that's going to be for that situation. However, I just sold a property last month in December and we listed it really priced it right. And uh, my clients did a great job making it look really good. I had a really good marketing packet on it and everything. And we had multiple offers on the first few days on the market, even though it's a buyer's market. We priced it right and we had multiple offers. And so in that scenario, had we received, you know, we had three or four offers on it. Had one of those been 10% under the list price, we would have kind of chuckled at it and tossed it aside and looked at the serious ones because we sold the house for over the list price and it was only a few days on the market. Yeah. And that's what I try to tell buyers, you know, I, I, I limit my counseling and I leave it to the real estate agent. But for the average buyer who, who doesn't realize, you know, at 399, is this overpriced? Is it underpriced? Can I offer it 360? Do I need to offer it 385? You know, in, in your case where it's priced really aggressive, they might have to offer above. What can a buyer do or what do you do as an agent to figure out where you're coming in as a buyer? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So the important thing is knowing that you've got a really good agent that knows what they're doing. So I'm out there showing my clients properties. We go and look at maybe three houses, four houses, and they go, hey, this one we really like. We could see ourselves living in this home. What do we need to do? What's going on? That's where my job gets started and the work really gets going. I'm going to jump on the MLS. I'm going to look at all the comps. I'm going to see what's active, what's pending, what's sold recently. So I can do my own little analysis as far as what I think. Is this thing priced too high? Is it priced just right? Is it actually priced maybe a little low? And then I'm also going to call up that listing agent and I'm going to do my best job of leaning on my experience Been selling real estate for a long time. So I know kind of the ways to handle the conversation to try to pull out as much information as I can from that agent. You know, how many showings have you been having? Do you have any offers right now? What's the seller's situation? What's their timing like? What are they, where are they going? Why? The more information you can get as a buyer, the more packaged of information you can put together to go okay based on everything here we now know it would be wise to offer yeah they're listed here but it would make sense to to offer here they don't have any offers right now the one around the corner just sold below that and everything and that way it's a unique offer for that specific property yes the market is favoring you as a buyer yes you probably don't have as much competition as there was in the past but be prepared, be aware. Every house is different. You might offer way under on one of them and you might have competition on the one around the corner if it's priced right or if it's a different unique property. Yeah. And I think that's important for people to hear. If you missed it, you know, Doug, who's active in the market, working with buyers day in and day out, you know, talking to agents on, on both sides day in and day out. There's no one size fits all. I'm going to go offer 10% below list on every property. Because remember, the seller and their agent can list that property whatever they want. So the same exact property could be listed at 650 and 550 by two different sellers. Um, and if it's listed at 650, it's probably overpriced. If it's listed at 550, it might be aggressive and it's going to sell for for 580. And so um, to your point, um, the best agents I work with, like yourself, are going out there and digging out the information, not just from the MLS and the comps, but from that specific scenario. Like you said, the seller and their situation. Do they need to sell next week? 
Are they going to pull it off and not sell it at all if they don't get a certain number? All these things, if you don't ask, you won't get that information. So um, I, I really like um, the fact that when I've got a buyer with, with a great agent like you, I know that you're going out there and doing all that work um, to, to get the information for the buyer. It's really kind of educating the buyers. Hey, every house is a little different. And that's where my expertise comes in to help you out. Now, once you get into that property, more than likely, because it's a bit of a buyer's market, it's probably going to go a little bit smoother. You know, you might be able to negotiate having some repairs. Once you do some inspections or something, you might be able to get a credit help with some buy down stuff or cover some costs of fixing some stuff. If this was a market where there was no homes available and there was 10 offers on the property, you're not going to be able to be negotiating that. This isn't that type of market. So it does help in regards to once you get the offer accepted, you've got a little bit more room there, a little bit more strength to potentially push for some fixes, some repairs, some credits, other things like that. Additionally, within the offer, your agent needs to know how to structure things appropriately as far as contingency timeframes. Are we competing with someone else? If so, we need to shorten it. If not, you know, hey, let's give ourselves some leeway on a contingency timeframe or let's have the seller cover the title insurance and the escrow fee and give us a one-year home warranty and those types of things. That's where this buyer's market is going to favor you to be able to help with those closing costs, to be able to throw them on the seller side of things if the situation dictates it for sure. Yeah. And, and funny how times have changed, man. Because if, if, if we were having this conversation in early 22, you know, in Northern California, where we're at, um, the, the, there's no contingencies in place, right? And there's, there's no concessions being made on the sell side. Lucky for buyers, we're now in a market where, you know, most homes, there is negotiating room. And I'd love to talk to you. Um, because we work closely with all the buyers that we work with on pre-planning. And as we're putting together a structure on the mortgage, um, it, it's very important that agent and lender are, are talking. Agent and lender are, are working together as a team. If your game plan on your mortgage is a 2-1 buy-down that's funded by the seller, we can only do that if you get the seller credits. Right. And so um, agent lender talking, saying on this one, if we offer 550, it's going to be 11,254 or whatever the number is, just random numbers there um, for a two one buy down uh, because we've got great products. So time on. out, time out. Go, go a little. <laughs> Not everyone watching this is going to understand what two one buy down is and those types of things. So for the buyers that are out there going, hey, I, it's, I'm kind of. I'm ready to take this step, but I'm kind of nervous. Interest rates seem high. Prices have been high for a while and those types of things. Um, what are the mortgage options that are out there to help buyers get the best mortgage possible right now, but also take advantage of the fact that there's not a whole lot of competition and it is a bit of a buyer's market to negate the fact that rates are a little bit on the higher side than we've seen recently. Right. Yeah. And this has been a concern. And as rates have gone up end of 2022 and we sit in 2023 with with affordability being an issue for a lot of buyers, uh, we're aware of that. And um, while there's multiple different products that, that we can use, there's a permanent buy down where you might pay a point or two points, you know, 4,000, 8,000, depending on the loan amount to buy your rate down permanently. What's been more attractive for buyers? So, for example, in that case, rate is six and a half, six and a quarter. They can pay when you go to close and have their rate permanently be lowered to a percentage lower than that. Or? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's every rate sheet is different, but maybe they they pay a little bit and they get a five point seven five on a thirty okay. year fixed. So they pay a little bit more and they get a five point three seven five. And so that's always been around and that's always been an option. What we've been advising our clients. That probably doesn't make sense unless you're only planning on staying in the house for a really long time or something like that. I mean, why would you buy it down for the life of a 30-year mortgage? Right, right. There's something better than that. Yeah, in, in an environment that we're in where we foresee mortgage interest rates coming down, um, we're recommending the two one buy down. So I'll explain a little bit of that because sure. I know it, not everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Two and one refers to the first year you're in it, the interest rate is 2% lower. The second year you're in it, it's 1% lower than years three through 30. It's it's a fixed rate. So it's not an adjustable rate product. It's a fixed rate years three through 30. But in a scenario where 5.75 is the rate we can offer, it's actually 3.75 in year one, 4.75 in year two, and then 5.75 years three through 30. The best part about this structure is that 
to get that reduced rate and payment for the first couple of years, which buyers like. It helps them get in, get comfortable, get adjusted to a mortgage payment. It's funded by the seller. And there are options to have, you know, it, it funded in other ways, but vast majority funded by the seller. In a market we're in, you, you know, a great realtor can negotiate to get those credits. And so let's say it's a $12,000 cost. It's funded by the seller for this 2-1 buy down. In a scenario where rates continue to go down like they have been, and we're able to get a 4.99 30-year fixed or a 4.75 30-year fixed 9, 12, 15 months from now, if you refinance within those first couple of years when you've got the reduced rate and you've got that buy down sitting in an escrow account, you get whatever's remaining refunded to you. Oh, wow. So you're getting the credit from the seller. It's lowering your mortgage payment for the first couple of years. And then if you refinance for any reason, in a declining interest rate environment, a lot of people are going to refinance. So that, that permanent buy down we talked about, the money's gone. In this situation, whatever's left gets refunded to you. And it's, it's really great, you know, just to give some rough figures, somebody might look at a 5.75% interest rate and say, man, my first house, a $3,200 payment is, is a lot, right? I don't know if I can handle that right away. If they're able to get into the home, have a 37, or I'm sorry, $2,700 payment in year one, $2,950 in year two, then it goes to $3,200. We never guarantee they can refinance, but they're likely to. If they don't, it's fixed at that you know, end rate for years three through 30 and it's $3,200 payment, but they might, you know, have a little bit of, of runway to get used to that mortgage payment. They're likely to get raises in the next couple of years in, in, in most positions. And so it's just a way to kind of ease into home ownership where people are, are struggling with, you know, higher interest rates equals higher mortgage payments. And so we understand the affordability issue for sure. So in that situation, it sounds like the, the positives to it are assuming rates do go down, we're probably never going to see, you know, two and a half or 3% ever again, but assuming they go down to five ish, something like that, or whatever in, in the future, in the next couple of years to come, they could refinance into that rate and be locked into that moving forward. But it's also a worst case scenario. It's not like these adjustable rate mortgages in the past where you kind of didn't know where things were going right. to go. You comfortably knew, you know, here's here's the upper limit of where it's going to go with that buy down. That's good. So as a real estate agent hearing this, it's super important that I'm working with Matt and his team and my buyers. So we're working together going, OK, that's the program that you're going to want to fit into. OK, if that's the case, I need to communicate with this listing agent here. Explain why we're going to be asking for this credit structure the offer in a way that would make sense for both the buyer and seller to make a deal come together, those types of things so that you as the buyer can take advantage of a buy down program like that. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's, it's another example among many why it's very important <clears throat> to have a great realtor and loan officer, uh, not just for the best client experience for you, the buyer, but ones that also work well together, right? Because I've seen it in other situations where um, for whatever reason, there's not communication going on. And I'm talking about a 2-1 buy down and we need about 11,500 for it. And then I get word we're in contract with no credit, right? And then you have to tell the buyer, well, we can, we can do what we can to structure the greatest mortgage possible, but all the plans we had about getting you this 2-1 buy down are not going to come to fruition if we don't have the seller credit. And so um, get yourself a great real estate agent talk to a lender you like and trust, one that's able to you know, empower you through education and coach you up on how to structure a mortgage and then make sure they're working together. Make sure that they're talking, communicating, and really as a team, putting together a plan to get you in a home that you like with a mortgage that's comfortable. And if you if, if done correctly, home ownership should be fun and exciting, not not scary and you know something that you're, that you're terrified of. Yeah, well, I hope this video is helpful. Thanks for having me on that and chatting kind of buyer's market stuff here. And if you're looking for more stats, more data, what's going on in the market, you can check out my YouTube channel and my website, realestatewith.com. Happy to answer any questions you've got on what's going on in the Sacramento market. And Matt, go ahead. Give them yeah, for sure. If you're local in Sacramento, just shoot an email to team at mtmg.com. No matter where you're at in the country, you can go to greatmortgagebroker.com, fill out the quick form, let us know where you're at and how we can help. We'll be in touch. See ya. Thank you.